If you read the tabloid-type newspapers, you probably think you've heard about every kind of murder that could possibly occur. But there's one kind of murder that never reaches the courts or the newspapers. Murder in the mind. You hear a case in point as you listen to a story called Body Without the Crime on Theater 5. <laughs> I'm a citizen and a taxpayer, and I know my rights. Now, I demand to see the district attorney. Now, take it easy, Mr. Baxter. The DA can't see everybody just the minute they want to see him. Now, why don't you sit down and tell me about but it? But I have told you about it. Now, look, I, I, I don't mean any offense, Lieutenant Burke, but you're only a police officer. I've got to see the district attorney. This is driving me crazy. Stop raving mad. Look, Mr. Baxter, the district attorney's office knows all about your case. Yeah, but, 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 but this is the new district attorney. I've got to see him. Uh, we'll see, Mr. Baxter, but uh, you'll have to make an appointment. I've asked that young lady a dozen times. Now, am I going to see him at once, or do I have to break that door down? All right, I'll see what I can do. Now, stay here for a minute. Yes, sir. Uh... I'm sorry, Mr. Jordan, but uh, there's a man here who insists on seeing you. Now, uh, maybe if you talk to him for a minute, it'll keep him from going out of control. Of course I'll see him. My door is always open. Uh, but this is kind of a funny case. Now, please. Uh, please, sir, you, you've got to arrest me before I kill somebody else. Arrest now, me! Now, just a minute, uh, Mr. Baxter. Uh, that, that's right, Lyle Baxter. Well, try to calm yourself before you try to talk. Oh, I, I, I'm all right now. But I, I've got to talk to you alone. Hmm. Uh, you may go, Burke. All right, Mr. Jordan. I'll be right outside the door if you need. Now, uh, a moment ago you said before I kill somebody else. Yeah. You mean that you've already killed a person? Yes, my wife. And uh, you're here voluntarily to make a confession? Yes, yes. You see, I, I can't live with it any longer. I must warn you, Mr. Baxter, that anything that you say can be used in evidence against you. Oh, I know that. They, they told me that before. Before? Well, yes, I saw the district attorney. I, well, well, I mean the previous district attorney before. Well, I hope you'll understand if I seem a little bit confused. You realize that I've only been in office for a short time since the unfortunate and rather sudden death of my predecessor. Well, I don't care anything about all that. Now, I hereby confess that I killed my wife. Are you going to listen to me? Of course, of course. But I want you to be aware of all your rights. Oh, but you see, I, I don't want any rights. I don't deserve any rights. Very well. Just when did this homicide take place? It wasn't a homicide. It was murder. Well, suppose we leave the nature of the charge open until you've made your statement. When did you... Well, that is, uh, when did your wife die? Three months ago, as of last night. Oh. Try to be brief, but tell me about it in your own way. Well, that night, uh, three months ago, Sheila, my wife, was getting supper ready. I was standing at the window in the front room, mm -hmm. just, just standing there, you know, thinking all sorts of things. Oh, but I don't suppose you want to hear all about that. I want very much to know what was in your mind at that particular moment. Well, I, I was thinking about how it would be if I was running a little gasoline station out in Arizona. I, I was thinking of what life would be like without Sheila. Mm -hmm. Those dreams, they, they, they started a while back. I, I don't know just when. Dreaming she was dead. And waking up and finding out that she was And then wishing she was dead. I seemed to hear Sheila calling, but her voice was like from a distance, like out of a grave. After all, nobody will ever know, I thought. She, she always takes sleeping pills. Everybody knows she's unhappy. Anybody can take too many sleeping pills. I'd be my own boy. Nobody telling me what to do or what not to do. It would be like before I was married. Like when I was living with moms. It could come and go like I did. Lyle? Lyle, are you coming to supper? What? Oh, so she's mad. Oh, good. When she's mad, I just hope she gets what's coming to her. Lyle, for the last... Time, will you come here? I'm coming. I'm coming right now. Do you have to yell all the time? 
Lyle, you're the limit. I have to call you as if you were a child. You don't have to yell. Well, why didn't you come when I said supper was ready? Well, I didn't hear you. I called three times. I always have to call three times. Oh, I must have been thinking of something else. <sighs> well, never mind. Let's sit down and try to eat like civilized people. Just once, I wish we could have a meal on time. Well, I got home late. Can I help it if I had to stay late at the garage? No, but you could come when I call instead of daydreaming like a child. Anytime I take a minute to think. You call it daydreaming. Well, just for the sake of argument, suppose you were thinking. What were you thinking about? Thinking? Oh, I don't know. That's what I thought. Well, maybe I was thinking about that gas station in Arizona. Oh, that's not thinking. That's daydreaming. Yeah, if it was anybody else, you'd call it initiative. Use your initiative. This is the time to go out there while it's growing. Oh, Lyle, we've been through all this. You could never run a place of your own. You could hardly hold a job down here. I've been on the same job seven years. That's what I mean. The very same job. You're just running away from things in your mind. Anyway, you'd never leave here because of your mother. What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing. Then let's leave moms out of this. All right. Go ahead and eat your squash. I got it specially for you. Mm, doesn't taste right somehow. Your mother always told me that squash was your special favorite. What's wrong with it? Well, I think she always sprinkled a little nutmeg on it or something. It just so happens that I'm considered a very good cook. And you'd think so, too, if you didn't compare every mouthful with how your mom's cooked. What's the big idea of saying your mom that way? Oh, please, just eat your dinner. Forget the squash. It's gotten so I can't mention her without you throwing a fit. And if I don't mention her, you do. It's about time you started to understand something. Understand what? That, that when a grown-up man marries, he's supposed to detach himself from his mother and make a new home with his wife. Maybe if we went to Arizona or someplace, we... We could make a new home. Oh, that's got nothing to do with it, and you know it. No, you know it. You think you know everything. Oh, there you go, acting like a child again. I'm not going to listen to any more of this. Where do you think you're going? Out, that's where, out. Oh, no. Not this time. If you can't stand the sight of me, I'll go. Well, suit yourself. This time, I'll go off in a huff, and you can sit home and wonder what's happened to me for a change. When I think of all the nights that you've gone out... And stayed out late on purpose just to make me worry. No one asked you to worry if you did. You don't have enough sense to worry. You'll watch television till you go to sleep in your chair. Well, if you expect me to wear out the rug pacing the floor while you're in a movie, you're slightly mistaken. Well, I'm not going to any movie, and I am taking the car. I am first going to drive away from here as fast as I can. I don't know where, and I don't care. And I don't care if I never come back. Well, if you're going to drive so fast, you'll need the keys to the car, won't you? I'll show you. I know a few places to go, and not those crummy diners where you sit around drinking bad coffee while you smoke like a little boy. I mean places where there's a little life and action. Well, don't spend all your money in one place. I may not have to spend my money. I may find somebody else who wants to have a little fun out of life. Well, who's stopping you? Drive fast, have fun. Wrap the car around a tree. You can break your neck for all I care. You, you really mean that, don't you? Yeah. Yes, I do. Sheila. Oh, Sheila, don't be a fool. I... I, uh, I wanted to know when's the last show. Well, the last show's over for tonight. Uh, do you want the feature times for tomorrow? Uh, no, no, uh, well, that's what I mean. When did the last show end tonight? Oh, oh about 20 minutes ago. I was just getting ready to leave the office. Oh, well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I was just wondering. Is there anything more I can do for you? Well, no, it's, it's just that my wife went to the movie. Uh, that is, I thought she went to the movie, and, and, and since it's getting late, I was wondering... Uh, there wasn't anyone taken ill or anything. No, no, nothing like that. Well, sorry to bother you. Oh, I, I think I, I, I hear her drive up. Yeah, sorry to bo bother That's you. quite all right. Goodbye. Well, 
How was the movie? Oh. I thought you were someone else. Are you Mr. Lyle Baxter? Well, yes. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. I was expecting somebody else. I... May I come in? Well, yes, of course. Oh, what is it, officer? We tried to call you, Mr. Baxter. You see, there's been an accident. An accident? Oh, no. No, not my wife. I'm afraid so. She's at the Memorial Hospital. I'll drive you over. Wait, I'll, I'll, I'll call our own doctor. Her, her, her doctor, she... There won't be any need of that. I'm sorry. Sorry? I hate to break the news this way. She must have been going over 70 when she crashed into a tree trying to make a curve. Did she? She must have died instantly. Would you mind going with me? Yes, I'll come. Was she alone? Yes, she was. Were you there? Yes. I must have gotten there a few minutes after the crash. Well, could you tell me? Her... Her neck. I mean, was it broken? Was her neck broken? Why, yes. Yes, it was. But how did you know that? <laughs> We've been all through this, I believe, and I've tried to be very patient. Are you trying to prove yourself guilty of murder because you had a quarrel with your wife and shouted some words at her I'm sure you didn't mean? She stopped dead cold when I yelled that I didn't care if she broke her neck. She turned and looked at me. She must have seen something in my eyes which made her say, You really mean that, don't you? And I... I... I told her I did. And a few hours later... She was dead. From a broken neck. All right. Now, she left angrily and drove recklessly, but you couldn't possibly have planned that accident. Yeah, but I did plan to kill her. I, I thought about it. You may have wanted her to have that accident, but no jury would believe you actually caused it. I don't mean the accident. Well, what do you mean? The evening of a quarrel. I had gotten some arsenic. Go on. I was going to empty several of her sleeping capsules and fill them with arsenic. Did you? Well, no. No, no, I had to wait until she was asleep. And then we quarreled, and she drove off in the car. In short, you intended to murder your wife, but something happened to prevent the act of murder. But she's dead, and I'm to blame. Do you still have the arsenic? Oh, no. What happened to it? I flushed it down the kitchen sink. When did you do that? Oh, I guess it was about an hour after she drove off. Well, what made you get rid of it? Well, right after she drove off, I felt terrible. I sat alone in the kitchen. The meal she'd gone to all the trouble to prepare was still on the table. And, and all the time she was working in the kitchen, I was in the front room planning to kill her. I, I felt all mixed up. I, I began to worry, and I, 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 I wished I hadn't said what I did say. I, I, I kept hearing the awful scream of the tires as she rounded the corner, and I knew if anything happened to Sheila, I'd, I would be guilty. I watched the arsenic down the drain. Mr. Baxter, if your story is true... It is. It's the truth. I'll have to do some checking. Why? I told you that I killed her. That depends. On what? Whether there's arsenic in her remains. Burke? Yes, sir? Will you come in with Mr. Baxter, please? Sit down, Mr. Baxter. <clears throat> I've had Lieutenant Burke here recheck all aspects of your wife's death. Actually, the former district attorney went over the same ground. You've caused my office a great deal of trouble. But I told you everything. I told you that I killed her. Wasn't that all that was needed? Burke, tell him what you found. Here's the report of the trooper who tried to stop Mrs. Baxter when she was speeding. And the statement of eyewitnesses who saw her crash. Here's the report on the cause of death. Mrs. Baxter died from a broken neck and other injuries. It was accidental death. But, but I planned it. The, the arsenic. The body was exhumed. There was no trace of arsenic. No, no. Please, can't you see? I wished she were dead. 
I wanted to be free, and I deliberately planned on how to kill her. We went all through that when you were here before. Now, I couldn't take your word about destroying the poison. That's why the body was exhumed. The examiner ran a special test for poison. Negative. Oh, I wish I could believe that I didn't do it, but I can't. I just can't. Mr. Baxter, you said over and over that you felt terrible, that you wished you hadn't shouted those words at your wife, that you were worried well, about Well, I, I, I don't remember that or, or what I said. The point is that though in a moment of anger or resentment or frustration you wanted to kill your wife, there was still affection for her which made you change your mind. No, no, now that's not it. I wish it were, but it isn't. But that's what you told me, in effect. Well, I, I lied to you. I thought you didn't remember what you said before. Well, that's what I wanted it to be. I, look, I, I tried to tell myself that I did care enough about her not to go through with it. Then why did you get rid of the poison? I was afraid of being found out, you see. I, I remember that arsenic could be found in a body months after a person was dead. Actually, Mr. Baxter, there never was any arsenic, was there? You have a guilty conscience, but that doesn't make you guilty of murder. And when man and wife become angry, they say a lot of things they don't mean. Happens to everybody. No, that's not so. Anger brings out the truth. Now, when I told her to go and break her neck, I really wanted to kill her. Mr. Baxter, your wife was unhappy, you said. A, a good deal of the time, yes. Have you considered the possibility that it may have been her fault? Sir, I drove her to it. I'm as guilty as if I'd poisoned her with arsenic. To get back to your change of mind, if you hated a man, leveled a gun at him, and shot him dead, that's murder. Legally, you committed no crime. How, how about... Morally, I don't know. I suppose if deep in your heart you wanted your wife to die, that would be a sin. Then arrest me for my sin. Well, I'm afraid that's out of my jurisdiction. There's nothing more I can do or say, Mr. Baxter, except... Well, don't go on torturing yourself. I've tried. For three months, I've tried. I, I need help. I suggest you see your spiritual advisor, or perhaps a psychiatrist. I'm not crazy. You're, you're the ones who need psychiatrists, all of you. Please get out of here and don't let me see you here again. All right. All right, I'm going. Well, I hope that's the end of that. Me too. But don't make any bets on it. I've got to see him. What is it, Burke? Mr. Baxter here says he has some information on the girl who was killed in the park. I killed her. I tell you, I killed her. If you have any information, we'll be glad to have oh, it. I killed her. That's all. Well, why? How? She reminded me of Sheila. You see, every time I went to the park, she was there, like, like she was following me. So, uh, so I grabbed her, and I, I told her to let me alone, and she slapped me and ran, and I, I chased her into a clump of bushes and shot her. Where's the gun? Oh, I, I, I threw that in the river. Was it an automatic? Yes. She was killed with a small caliber foreign make revolver. Before she died, she described the man who shot her. We're looking for him. But the papers We don't that... tell every detail of a crime to the reporters. Look, you're lying. You're making up a story to keep from arresting me for the murder of my wife. Take it easy, Baxter. Oh, you're not going to get away with this. I'm going to go to the mayor. I'll go, I'll go to the governor, and he'll have you thrown out of office. Keep still, or I'll have to throw you out of this office. Take it easy, Burke. Mr. Baxter, I've done my best to convince you you were innocent of any crime. I hope you talk to your spiritual advisor. He told me to pray to be forgiven. I don't want to be forgiven. I want to pay for my crime. Now, you listen to me. If you continue to brood on this, if you come in here and confess to every sensational crime, you'll end up in a mental institution. Now, get out. I might have known you wouldn't understand. All you know is the law, not justice. All right. I'll fix you. I'll get even with you. I'll demand Come the charge. Mr. Baxter, let's oh. go. Mr. District Attorney, and, and, and you too, Officer Burke, I hope you break your neck. Well, it's a good thing wishes can't kill. Yeah, uh, but that guy's getting on my nerves. You know what I just thought of for the first time? What's that? The previous District Attorney, just before you took office. He fell down the cellar steps. That's right. And broke his neck.
Five has presented Body Without the Crime, written by Joseph Cochran and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Lenka Peterson, Frank Thomas, Louis Van Ruten, Robert Dryden, and Ralph Camargo. Audio engineer, Marty Ford.